for the chamber. And um, uh, the first thing I'd like to do is thank all of you for your flexibility in pivoting to this uh, uh, virtual event. And there is, is no question at all that, that we continue to face some really unique challenges uh, in, in our community and throughout the world. And at the LEAD Center where I work, we, we certainly have been singing the blues at some points in time over these last uh, uh, many months. But what I want to point out is that the underlying vibe and philosophy of blues music is persistent optimism in the face of adversity. So I would like to invite you to join me as this new year starts to uh, potentially consider adopting a, a little bit of that optimism as we face uh, the future. And something that brings a lot of optimism to, to uh, my eyes is the fact that we have five incredible sponsors of this legislative priorities event. And those five organizations are LMH Health, US Bank, CEK Insurance, RPG, otherwise known as Restaurant, Pub and Games, and finally Evergy. So let's, let's acknowledge them in our virtual way, um, these five organizations uh, that are sponsoring this legislative priorities events. Thank you so much. I would also like to really express our gratitude to the state delegation that has joined us on this Zoom event, our state senators and our state representatives. Thank you so much for your service to our community and beyond. And at this point, I would like to hand it over to the MC for this event, the architect of this event, and that is our Chamber's VP, Vice President of External Affairs, Mr. Hugh Carter. Thanks, Hugh. Great. Thank you so much, Derek. I appreciate it. This is, I think, year nine of me doing this. So the architecture is getting, it's getting easier, although COVID throwing in this last minute change made it about as exciting as year one. So, <laughs> uh, but thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, looks like it's a really good turnout. Folks are still signing on. I think we'll be well north of 100 on the call. And uh, um, we, we are recording this call. I will be sending that out to our uh, uh, government affairs folks and it'll be posted on our website. So uh, many more will see the call after the fact, um, but it, it's great to have you here. Yeah, I'd also like to welcome our, our delegates. Uh, a couple of them, uh, Senator Rick Kluse, who's uh, kind of new to this for, for us. Uh, Rick has a sliver of Douglas County. His, his uh, largely though he's Shawnee County, but he's been very, very engaged with our delegation and, and we really are, are happy to have him on board. He has a committee meeting this morning and hopes to join, join us at uh, some point. Uh, Representative Mike Amix, uh, the same, I think he's on the tech committee, which is gonna be challenged with the, the COVID again. So, uh, but he, he does plan to be here for at least his portion to, to speak and catch as much as he can. Otherwise we do have with us uh, Senators Marcy Francisco and Tom Holland, Representatives Barbara Ballard, Boog Heiberger, and Christine Haswood. So thank you all so much for being here this morning. Uh, who, who would have thought that we would be doing it virtually uh, again this year? I, I said to my GCA group that the new year feels more like deja vu year to me, um, but uh, it, it's the right thing to do, uh, keep everyone safe. And I do think that um, we're gonna have a, a much better turnout. Some more eyes and ears will hear this by doing it this way. But again, thank you for, for your flexibility, everybody. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items. So you came into the session muted, everybody, please stay muted so that we can all hear clearly and we'll just uh, unmute when you speak and remute. You should have opened up in speaker mode. So if you're having trouble seeing the, the speaker and a larger screen, click into, back into speaker mode. We probably won't have time for questions this morning, but if you do have pressing questions or feedback based on what you've heard or anything you'd like to communicate to our delegation, uh, please use the chat box. That's in the center, at the bottom in the center. And uh, at a minimum, we'll be able to pass those questions on and get, and, and get some answers back to you, okay? Um, again, this is being recorded. Um, Tomorrow, I'll send that link out along with a, uh, a, a preview of this legislative session that Sandy Braden uh, has developed today for us. Uh, Sandy is the um, 
principal of Braden, Heidner, and Lowe. Those of you who don't know, they are additional sets of eyes and ears for the chamber at the Capitol. Uh, do great work for us tracking all of our legislative priorities. And, and uh, Sandy develops a weekly State House report for us that, that comments on any activity related to our priorities and then other highlights going on in the session. Those are sent out weekly to our government and community affairs email list. Uh, we've got about 400 folks on there. And any testimony we provide, whether it's through uh, the chamber or the, our metal coalition, well, that's a coalition of Manhattan, Emporia, Topeka, and Lawrence, those get shared to the government affairs group uh, first as well. So if you'd like to be in the loop, that group also does, we do a monthly luncheon with a guest speaker. Uh, next Wednesday is going to be via Zoom uh, again, but uh, we have the uh, director of the Kansas Housing Resources Commission presenting on their statewide housing uh, study. And that's the type of thing we do uh, monthly. So if you have any interest in joining the Government and Community Affairs Group to be in the loop there, please put your email in the box and Jancy Mullen will get you added to that list as well. So. I think that's all the housekeeping for this morning. We have 12 speakers left to go this morning, so it's gonna be kind of rapid fire the rest of the way. Uh, we'll first hear from representatives of the city of Lawrence, Douglas County, the Chamber, Lawrence School District, and the University of Kansas. After they take about five minutes each to touch on their hopes for the session, uh, we will then go back to our delegates and they'll each take a few minutes to uh, share their feedback on what they've heard, let us know what committees they're serving on and any other highlights they'd like us to, to hear about before the session. So with that, let's begin with our uh, first speaker this morning, City of Lawrence Mayor Courtney Shipley. Hello, everyone. Um, um, good morning. Um, I'm Mayor Courtney Shipley. Um, it is unfortunate we couldn't be with each other in person, um, but I feel blessed to see all your shining optimistic faces. Um, I do want to thank the Chamber for providing this crucial platform for us to have dialogue with our representatives about the needs and values of our neighbors. And thank Bonnie and Hugh and Travis for getting this reorganized um, for everyone's safety. Um, I also want to thank uh, everyone at Douglas County, USD 497, Dr. Lewis and LMH for continuing to champion health and safety in our community. Um, I am actually not known to love my own oration, but I was really looking forward to this speech. Um, on behalf of my incredibly experienced fellow Lawrence City Commissioners, uh, Vice Mayor Lisa Larson, Brad Finkeldye, Bart Littlejohn and Amber Sellers, I am proud to submit our legislative priority statement for 2022. Uh, I would like you all to notice that we've broken it uh, down a little differently. It's uh, broken down into our priorities um, according to our strategic plan, uh, which is guiding us and our focus towards the future Lorenzians would like to see. Um, we share many of the same needs and values uh, that our partners at USD 497 and Douglas County will mention shortly, so I'll let them hit those. Um, but just quickly, I'll mention some items uh, we ask our legislators to advocate for perennially. Um, firstly, we hold home rule authority as granted by the Kansas Constitution to be essential. Limiting home rule stifles creative problem solving. The innovations citizens expect from municipalities will ultimately make Kansas more resilient. Um, next, art is economic development. Um, the arts and culture sector in Douglas County is a $30.8 million industry that, genu that generates $2.8 million in local and state revenue. A return to pre-2011 arts funding levels will help bolster, bolster cultural economies as well as tourism. We support decriminalization, uh, decriminalizing the use and possession of small amounts of marijuana, as well as legalization of medical marijuana which should be subject to state and local taxes. We support Medicaid expansion by the state. Our statement outlines a number of vital services that should be covered, including increasing the allowable reimbursement rate for emergency management services. Some newer items um, I wanted to mention, um, our support for the modernization of Kansas liquor laws. 
um, some changes which really helped our economy during COVID and the continuation of that um, is vital. Our support for enhancements to the Kansas Act Against Discrimination, our support for statewide action on criminal justice reform, and lastly, our support for efforts to reduce the burden of state sales tax on groceries and other necessities such as feminine hygiene products. Among our specifically local level requests are funding to support the remediation action plan for the former farmland industries nitrogen plant site. As outlined in our statement, we believe financial relief in our remediation efforts is warranted and available. We also request that investments in the South Lawrence traffic way be prioritized in 2022, as well as investments in multimodal infrastructure and electric charging stations. Um, and so those are the highlights, um, pretty quick, but um, with that, I, I do kind of want to say on a personal note to our legislatures, um, most of you have been a mentor to myself and many of my um, colleagues. And there is no way that I can thank you enough for the work you do for us in Topeka. Um, frankly, it makes me want to take a nap to think about it sometimes. But um, your work is vastly different from what we do here locally. And I hope everyone appreciates the fortitude it takes for you all to advocate for my fellow Kansans. As you go to the State House for us once again, I want you to carry what I want to carry with you some genuine words of support. And I don't say this very often, but when I do, I mean it in, in real earnest. <clears throat> so, Senator Francisco, I believe in you. Senator Holland, I believe in you. Representative Heiberger, I believe in you. I know Mike's not here, but Representative Amix, you guys can tell him, I believe in him. Um, Representative Haswood, I believe in you. Representative Ballard, I know you don't need me to, but I believe in you. And unfortunately, I do not actually know Senator Clues yet. So I believe in him because my neighbors believe in him and that is good enough for me. So somebody tell him to give me a call. Um, <laughs> um, with that, I just wanna thank you all. And again, wish you the best of luck in what is absolutely a very difficult job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Courtney. And I can vouch for Senator Clues as well. And I'd love to set that coffee up with you. So we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, next, we have, uh, I wanted to pass along uh, County Chair Shannon Portillo had a, uh, a family funeral, unfortunately, she had to attend this morning. So uh, in her stead this morning, Vice Chair Shannon Reed on behalf of the county. Thanks, Hugh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope this first week of this new year has been as smooth as one can expect right now and that you're all feeling healthy enough while we pivot again to make adjustments in our daily routines and the work that we all do. I'm truly grateful to be joining y'all for breakfast at home this morning. So I hope you have your coffee, tea, and um, nutritious breakfast <laughs> as needed. And maybe we'll rejoin at Maselli's um, for hot breakfast together next year. Um, I also want to thank the Chamber for gathering us and making this important call to pivot this event online. I really appreciate that and know that it um, that certainly it made the week um, ch challenging for some of you, so I appreciate that. At our final meeting of last year, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners voted to approve our 2020, 2022, so many twos, <laughs> legislative statement, which is a few page document that I believe you all have copies of now. And that details the varied issues that we support at the state level and hope for progress on in the upcoming sessions. We so appreciate our local delegation and your ongoing commitment to working for Douglas County values at the state level. Here are a few highlights of those priorities. We support sustained statewide funding and resource support for our public health workers, all of whom we know are struggling in ways that I don't think we can begin to fully understand as elected officials. They work continuously in the name of protecting each of our local communities to the best of their ability from the most devastating effects of this global health crisis. They need us now more than ever. We also encourage the legislature to establish additional clarity on issues of emergency powers, and we oppose any changes that would limit the county's home rule authority in responding to those emergencies. We support state laws that will help us further evolve our local, our local 
criminal legal systems in ways that serve our residents and their right to access justice. We hope to see continued efforts for reducing incarceration, effective policies for addressing acute racial disparities throughout our systems, and new ways of tangibly decriminalizing poverty. We, of course, also hope to see increased funding for the Kansas State Board of Indigent Defense Services so that capacity can be built for client-centered holistic services. We also encourage the state legislatures the state legislature to keep a keen focus on the housing needs of all Kansans who need and deserve access to a variety of programs and supports that will help them stay safely housed. We know that our communities have been in a housing crisis for several years already, and the pandemic that we are still navigating has only escalated things and highlighted for all of us the very acute and critical needs of residents struggling to maintain stability both in homes they own and rent, and of course, community members who are houseless and struggling to find homes again. We support ongoing access to crucial emergency rental and utility assistance at the state level, along with other long-term effects, uh, <clears throat> efforts to help avoid uh, evictions as well as discriminatory rental practices. We support maintaining county's home rule authority again, and in this area to address affordable housing needs. And as Mayor Shipley mentioned, in creative and innovative, flexible ways that meet the needs of our local communities. We hope that home rule authority continues um, and we are committed in Douglas County to innovate ways and keep our most vulnerable residents housed with the permanent supports that they need to build a safe and healthy life. And we know that that takes a multi-pronged approach. And as one of my good friends often says, a diversity of tactics. We, of course, we also wholeheartedly support and hope for can care expansion, as we know that bringing more federal dollars to Kansas in every way possible is of crucial service to all the people that we serve. Our lower income residents deserve access to ample health care coverage. And it's, it's an equity issue that needs prioritization, and I really hope to see some movement on that on the state level this, in this coming year. We really applaud bipartisan efforts to eliminate the state sales tax on food and encourage this legislature to repeal that tax altogether. We know this action will have positive impacts for folks. We also support the need for increased access to vital food programs and systems that feed individuals and families, such as expanded WIC access and more widely available SNAP benefits. Food, like housing, are at the top of all Kansans' hierarchy of needs. They are vital resources to keep folks alive, healthy, and stable. We must protect them. We look forward to the distribution of federal infrastructure funding dollars that can help counties and municipalities increase capacity and functionality of vital needs within our communities, rural internet access being one of them. We are excited to see what the legislature does this year to address the climate crisis and improved sustainability efforts at a statewide level. We support, we support conserving natural resources, monitoring of oil and gas industries while looking to more renewable energy options, and we encourage the establishment of a statewide climate crisis plan that can give communities a roadmap for true regenerative activity. In all of the state legislature's work this coming year, we also hope that our local delegation will be paying particular attention to the well-assessed needs and recommendations provided by the Governor's Commission on Racial Equity and Justice. We know that to advance equity and justice in all of our communities, we need further statewide leadership on addressing laws and policies that perpetuate so many racial disparities and injustice. Communities of colors need systems of government at every level to be more aware of structures and policies that have contributed to generations of inequity. I'm really excited to see what kind of progress is made on that. I know that there's the report is quite thorough and has a lot of really tangible recommendations. So I'm looking forward and I know my fellow commissioners are looking forward to seeing that progress. As 2022 sessions kick into high gear at the State House, we here in Douglas County are rooting for all of you and the very hard work you have ahead. I know there's so much uncertainty and fatigue that all of us are feeling deeply these days. And I also know that there's an incredible amount of opportunity and hope available to all of us and that we lawmakers have the capacity to do incredible things in this coming year. So. We got this, we got you. Thank you for having us and our communities. Um, and I appreciate you all gathering here and engaging with local 
uh, elected officials and communities to make sure that um, you know what we are all hoping to see at the state level and please um, keep us informed about what we can do on the local level to support those efforts. Thanks so much, Shannon. Next, we will hear from the Government and Community Affairs Chair for the Chamber, Paul Davis. Thanks so much, Hugh, and uh, good morning to everyone. I'm very pleased to be able to uh, present the Chamber's uh, legislative priorities. Uh, this is a, a document that uh, we don't uh, just uh, pull off of a shelf every year and dust it off. Uh, it goes through uh, a lot of deliberation uh, from our Public Policy Task Force uh, to our Government and Community Affairs Committee and to the Chamber Board. And we've had uh, some great discussions about uh, uh, what is in this document, uh, and I hope that you'll take the time to review it. I also want to say uh, on behalf of the chamber, uh, a, a very big thank you to our legislative delegation. Um, having been in your shoes, I know that uh, this is a uh, crazy week. Uh, I was usually uh, tearing out uh, what little hair I had uh, this week as I was trying to uh, uh, get my my other job in shape uh, so that I could head over to uh, Topeka. And uh, we sincerely appreciate uh, the service uh, that you give. And many of you have uh, served our community uh, for uh, many years in, in multiple capacities, and we really appreciate that. Um, with that said, um, I want to hit some of the highlights in um, uh, the document that we've uh, provided to you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, economic development. Uh, that is the bread and butter of, of, of who we are as a chamber, trying to, to grow our community. And there are a number of incentive programs uh, that exist at the state level that are really critical uh, to the chamber's ability to, to be able to uh, retain great businesses that we have here in Lawrence and also recruit businesses to come here. Uh, many of you have uh, been acquainted with Steve Kelly, who is our vice president for economic development. Um, in a previous life, uh, and some of you, uh, if you've been around a little while, uh, know that Steve was at the Department of Commerce uh, for many, many years. And he will tell you that uh, you know, the HPIP program, the KIP program, the CUR program are really critical incentives uh, to be able to uh, recruit some of the great employers, uh, businesses like pretzels um, that is just coming to our community and be able to uh, retain the businesses that we have. So uh, making sure that those incentives continue to exist is very important. Um, we have a housing shortage here in Lawrence. Uh, that is no secret. And um, hopefully there will be more of a discussion about um, providing residential housing incentives that are gonna help communities like ours uh, be able to have the housing stock that we need uh, to be able to uh, accommodate people that are, are wanting to move to Lawrence and uh, be able to, to grow our community. Education is a, a critical issue for Douglas County. Um, and the legislature has done uh, a terrific job of uh, funding K through 12 education and our, our public schools, even though um, we have some, some real challenges uh, uh, here at uh, US 497. Uh, but I think all of you know that, uh, you know, KU is really the, the economic engine uh, that drives Lawrence. And um, we have seen uh, some really challenging fiscal issues for the university and all of higher education now for, for quite some time. And some progress was made um, during the last session. Um, and we hope that given the budget situation that you are in now, uh, that this will be an opportunity to, uh, to restore KU's fundings to pre-pandemic levels and, and, and hopefully go uh, beyond that. And if uh, when KU wins, uh, whether it's on the basketball court or, or in the classroom, uh, Lawrence wins. We all know that. Um, one of the, the, the pillars that we have under our education and workforce section is child care. And uh, Hugh will tell you that child care is mainstream economic development these days. Um, one of the major priorities of the Chamber's capital campaign is adding a significant number of child care slots uh, here in Lawrence and Douglas County. And that is a, a, an area of focus that the Chamber uh, continues to uh, uh, advocate for, and uh, we hope that you will pay uh, some significant attention to that issue during this session. 
uh, in the area of taxation, um, we are supportive of the uh, the efforts to uh, repeal the food and grocery sales tax. Um, I think that will benefit all Kansans and will benefit uh, the business community as well. Uh, I want to highlight one particular issue in this section, and that is the restoration of the research and development tax credit for S corporations and LLCs. Uh, this is a tax credit that used to exist but as part of the uh, so-called Brownback tax plan back in 2012 was repealed. Uh, it was added back for C corporations, but um, uh, as, as folks in the, in the business community know, uh, lots of businesses are organized as S corporations and LLCs, and they do not have the benefit of this tax credit. There are a number of businesses that here in Douglas County that used this uh, and it helped grow jobs, it helped provide more research and development opportunities, uh, and we really would like to see that restored for S-Corps and LLCs. Uh, in the area of transportation infrastructure, I know others have mentioned um, the South Lawrence Traffic Way. Uh, thank you for passing uh, the Ike Transportation Plan. Uh, that is a, a big deal for the state of Kansas, and the South Lawrence Traffic Way is part of that. Uh, it's currently in the pipeline, and uh, we very much want to see uh, that come to fruition and see that project uh, move from the pipeline uh, into a project uh, that uh, we're going to see uh, some serious progress on here uh, in the coming years. Um, discontinuing the diversion of funds from uh, the so-called Bank of KDOT uh, is another priority uh, because uh, if we're going to be able to complete projects like the South Lawrence Traffic Way, we can't have uh, continued funds being taken away from the highway fund. And I think the governor has proposed that the, the Bank of KDOT be closed next year, and hopefully that will happen. Um, lastly, I also want to mention the expansion of Medicaid. Um, that's a big deal for Lawrence Memorial Hospital. It's a big deal for lots and lots of citizens in our community. Uh, I know that that issue has not gotten a lot of traction uh, uh, recently, uh, but we hope that that can that discussion will continue and that will continue uh, to be a priority. Um, as Hugh mentioned, uh, we work very closely with some of our partners, uh, Metal, uh, Manhattan, Emporia, and Topeka. Uh, a lot of these priorities are priorities uh, that were developed uh, in concert uh, with with Manhattan, Emporia, and Topeka. And uh, as you uh, interact with legislators from those communities, I hope that you'll uh, be mindful of that and remind them. Uh, again, thank you for uh, the work that you do. And uh, we are uh, we will wanna be a resource to you. And I hope that you will always feel free to contact you or, or me or anybody else at the chamber uh, if we can be of help to you. Thanks so much. Thanks very much, Paul. Next, we will hear from the chair of the Lawrence School Board, Erica Hill. Thank you, Hugh. So good morning and happy new year, everyone. I'm Erica Hill, president of the Lawrence Public Schools Board of Education. And the school district is grateful for the opportunity to share our legislative priorities with you. So not only are the Lawrence Public Schools in the 21st month of the COVID response, we are in the middle of a budget planning process to carve an estimated $7 million from our general operating fund. This exercise is due to a COVID-related enrollment decline last year that did not rebound this fall and corresponding losses in state aid and weightings. With rising operational costs and nationwide staffing shortages felt locally, Lawrence Public Schools must identify significant cuts to positions and programs to both make ends meet shore up emergency reserves and provide employees salary increases. Our legislative priorities for the 2022 session began with Kansas tax policy and the school finance formula working together to support equitable and adequate financial support for public schools. This includes fully funding special education services at the required 92% of excess cost. Now it's no secret that the pandemic, statewide school closures, and prolonged remote learning, interrupted student learning. Public schools need support for high quality learning opportunities for our students, including personalized learning opportunities and experiences for each student and affordable access to broadband services for all of our students. The pandemic has emphasized the need for public schools to support not only the academic, but also the social and emotional needs of our students. 
The Lawrence School Board supports the incorporation of science of toxic stress and adverse childhood experiences into federal, state, and local policies and programs. The Lawrence Public Schools continues to advocate for nonpartisan spring school board elections and independent judiciary um, to uphold the, the Kansas Constitution. The legislature um, should also protect and maintain the spheres of authority designated to the school board and locally elected boards by the state constitution. Kansas needs innovative strategies to address workforce shortages, a long-term sustained commitment to state funding for CAPERS and a return to previous working after retirement laws to assist public schools in recruiting and retaining highly qualified and diverse administrators, teachers, and staff. In addition, we encourage the Kansas legislature to prioritize policies that support safety, wellness, and inclusion. We support celebrating diversity and honoring the achievement of all Kansans, especially our students. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our teachers, support staff, and school and district leaders for their compassion, flexibility, and perseverance during these challenging times. We also appreciate our school families and community partners who continue to help us maintain safe learning environments during this global pandemic. Finally, on behalf of the Lawrence Board of Education, I thank each of the members of the Douglas County delegation for their continued advocacy and support of Kansas public schools. And please let us know how we can help be of assistance to you um, and your work. Again, thank you for the opportunity to share our priorities with you this morning. And thank you all for everything you do for our community. Great, thank you very much, Erica. And finally, we will hear from the University of Kansas's Associate Vice Chancellor for State Relations, Kelly Witten. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for having, having us. And um, like everybody else has said, um, thank you so much for the um, delegation for, for hearing us out and, and, and listening to all of our priorities. At the, at the university, um, I think I say this every year that we have a unique year, um, but I really, this is probably one of my most unique years out of the 10 that I've been um, in, the, in, the session, in, um, uh, in this job. Um, we, have, we have a large legislative request. Most of you know this, but our legislative request, our official legislative request is something that is processed through the Board of Regents policies. Um, so it's not something that's strictly out of the university. It has to go through a, a broader process. And so um, the board has a, had a unique um, issue this year, which is um, the federal, man, uh, the federal um, has a mandate on uh, funding for higher education and K-12 um, because of all of the aid that came into the state through the three large aid packages of COVID um, in 2020 um, that still impacts this fiscal year that we'll be working on. So there is a level of funding in which the state needs to match in order not to risk any having to pay back any of that funding, K-12 and higher ed. So, um, and there is a little bit of debate of how much that is and in and, and that process. But so the Board of Regents put together a ask that met maintenance of effort, federal requirements of maintenance of effort. and. And in that, the university is, is very supportive of, of, of most of the points of that. And, and um, the, the board put two large base funding um, asks together, one of which is, is return our funding to pre-pandemic levels. Um, and one of the things that the universities, all the universities, public universities have been able to do is maintain um, tuition at its levels for three years, which is historic. It's never been done in the state and, and we went back as far as we possibly could. It doesn't look like it's ever been done. In order to do that for a fourth year, we have to have an investment from the state. With inflation and costs going up to the university, we simply cannot um, keep tuition the way that it is um, and not increase it on our students without an investment from the, from the state. Um, everybody else across the board is feeling these um, feeling inflation and 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 we have to make up some of these costs we did we did cost trimming measures up to 25 million on our campus and we simply cannot uh, reduce our our spending um, that much to to be able to not make up for a tuition increase without the investment of the state um, there's a large need-based aid package many of you know 
um, that the state of Kansas is a is a does not support need based aid nearly as much as our neighbors. So there's a package for need based aid um, for our for our students uh, in the state, so they can graduate with less debt, which is great for everybody. Um, we have a couple of non budgetary items as well. Um, the the there's two. Um, main ones. We have one that's a land swap bill with our endowment, um, and, and there are several components of it uh, that are very um, important to the university, um, and some are more important to the city than other. It's a, it's a, a, I think the component that matters the most to the city of Lawrence is probably the transit hub um, land exchange, and so the city, and that is on Bob Billings and Crestline. So, um, um, so that will be we are asking the ability to sell that land to endowment or swap it for another piece of their land. We have any time that we want to um, get rid of any state property, we have to have a bill for that. So we have three components of it um, that swap for endowment land. It's a little bit um, of a of a complicated bill, but it, each component of it is a very good thing for can uh, for KU and for the city of Lawrence because we can we can move forward with some of those projects. But um, that is one thing that we'll be working through the process, and I'm happy to give anybody more details on what that is. But it gets a little thick, so I don't want to. And and the second one, this is something the chancellor has been talking about for a while, and it's tied to the the land swap bill, which is we have to every time that we want to sell any piece of property that is state property, we have to go to the legislature, no matter how we obtained it. Um, and that adds about at the tightest 18 months to any process. Um, and as you know, when we're dealing with real estate and other things, sometimes being able, we miss opportunities because of that process. So the chancellor has, and has asked that we have the ability to sell state property that the university owns if it was originally obtained by gift or donor dollars or research funding. So not anything that was obtained by um, state funding. If there's a dollar of state funding, this would it would not be acceptable with that. But it's anything that we have obtained um, by that. And we, we believe that will help us um, and we, we retain the profit from that. Um, we can sell property, but it will go into capers. And, and some of you know that the University of Kansas's employees, we have very few CAPERS employees. We've moved away from that system. So we don't believe that it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to sell property that was given to us by donor dollars to put into CAPERS where our employees don't really sit their retirement. So that is, that is something that we'll be asking for so that we can kind of streamline that process and be engaged um, at, a, at a more um, business pace uh, with selling some property that we want. obviously we're not going to be selling Westco or, or Stronghold. These are you would be surprised at how much property the university actually owns, uh, not only in Douglas County, but across so that it gives us the ability to have a little bit of flexibility there. So those are really kind of our main points. We're very anxious to see what the governor has in the state of the state because of the, um, the, the budget process that the board went through this year. You know, we really gave a menu of, of things that we believe would meet maintenance of effort. Um, and so we're really wanting to see what she um, what she has some interest in and what the legislature has some interest in because we we gave more of a menu than a this is um, this is only what we need so that we are excited for the process to start. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, before we go on to the our, our delegates, I uh, wanted to share, I forgot to mention earlier, when I send this recording out, as well as uh, Sandy's preview of the upcoming session uh, to that government affairs list, well, I'll also have a link to our website where you'll be able to pick up the, the entire legislative agenda for each of our uh, presenters this morning. You've just caught, you know, five minutes of highlights here, but uh, you'll be able to, uh, to print those directly from our website as well. So, um, next, we would like to hear from each of our uh, state delegates for uh, five minutes or so. Uh, first, uh, any, any uh, responses or feedback based on what you've heard this morning. Uh, let us know any uh, committees that you're serving on this year or leadership roles and uh, in, anything else that you'd like to share with us in the somewhat short time we, we've got. But, uh, and I see that uh, uh, Representative Amix was able to join us. So, 
Uh, hopefully, Senator Kloos will be on at some point, and we may go a little out of order, but we'll, we'll catch him if he arrives. And let's start now with Senator Marcy Francisco. Thank you, Hugh, and good morning. Um, I'm too sorry that we couldn't meet in person, but very appreciative that we can still have this important conversation. Thanks to our Lawrence Chamber and the sponsors of this event. Also, thanks to the city, county, USD 497, and the University of Kansas. Hearing your priorities along with those of the chamber is very helpful. And please know that we take those seriously, even though we may not be able to comment on all of them this morning. I hope uh, most of you have had the chance to meet me. This will be my 18th year in the Kansas Senate. I'm the ranking member of the Senate's local government and utility committees and of the Joint Committee on Building Construction. I also serve on the Senate Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee and am agenda chair for the Senate Democratic Caucus. I will defend home rule in my role on this Senate's local government committee. We all know that the pandemic has come with a variety of challenges and exposed some weaknesses. Over the summer, I was privileged to be a substitute member for several meetings of the Unemployment Compensation, Modernization, and Improvement Council. I was impressed with the depth and concerns addressed for employees, employers, and the health of the fund. Those won't be quick fixes, but they're needed ones, and I think they um, are going to be addressed. Um, I also participated in the special committee on the 30 by 30 federal initiative and can share that the proposals to increase conservation and restoration are voluntary and locally controlled. I'm now looking forward to a challenging but hopefully productive year in the Kansas legislature. We will get the governor's budget next week. Governor Kelly and Lieutenant Governor Toland have been focused on economic issues over the past three years and it's paid off. Economic activity was certainly part of the state's significant revenue increase. The governor has said that she believes the state is now in a position to remove the state portion of the sales tax on food, something that many of us have been supporting. It would be great news for Kansas families. And although it will mean additional accounting work for some businesses, they will see a reduction in their expenses when those owners are not paying the credit card charges on the sales tax portion of a sale. This will be the first year that the state will fully fund what was required for public education, but for public education and so many other divisions and agencies, we need to recognize the challenges that underfunding over the past um, years has created. So with that, the governor is challenging us to look for one-time investments. Um, with concern that some of this may be one-time revenue collections, please give us your ideas for those one-time investments that can pay off for the years to come. I'm hoping that some of those uh, may be made for our state water plan. This will be the year for medical marijuana and sports wagering discussions. Certainly sports wagering would further bolster revenue projections. Um, I do wanna look also at policies that will help make utilities more affordable for customers. I do want to note um, several of you brought up Medicaid expansion, that because of federal action, if the state were to expand Medicaid this year, it would be an increase of some 60 million to the state revenue, not a decrease. So another really good reason to pass it this year. We have ongoing challenges for workforce issues, the provision of social services and statewide public health. On a final note, um, the delegation has had a request to honor grave sites and to ask that the business that uses skull in its name recognize the disrespect that that shows. I so appreciate all the other members of the Douglas County delegation. They've all been great to work with. I trust them to fill in much of what still needs to be discussed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Francisco. Next, we'll hear from Senator Tom Holland. Well, good morning, Hugh, and good morning, Lawrence. Uh, State Senator Tom Holland. I will be starting my uh, 20th year in the uh, Kansas le legislature, my 14th as a, as a state senator. Um, 
just a very brief background. Uh, my district is pretty much South Lawrence. I have everything pretty much south of 23rd Street and Clinton Parkway. Uh, my territory extends down to Baldwin, uh, as well as the communities of Eudora. Um, and then I have Northeast Lawrence across the river. And then uh, my territory, my district also stands up into Leavenworth County, uh, pretty much everything in Leavenworth to the east of the cities of uh, Leavenworth and Lansing. Um, really delighted to be here this morning. My committees I serve on, I'm the uh, ranking on Senate Assessment Taxation. I'm the ranking member on uh, Commerce. I'm also the ranking member on the Joint Committee Information Technology. And uh, I want to give a shout out specifically to Paul Davis and his comments about economic development. I, I did work in tandem with uh, Republican Chair Rob Olson last year on the Commerce Committee to uh, uh, renew uh, pretty much all of the major EcoVivo state incentives that we have on the books uh, that uh, Lieutenant Governor Tolan and his shop, the Department of Commerce, uh, were, were being sure we got renewed. So I'm glad to see that got put into place. Um, for me, you may not know, in addition to being a, a, a part-time uh, legislator, uh, I also am a small business entrepreneur. My wife and I run an IT consulting business, and I have three other businesses, a winery, a business uh, consulting firm, and now it's a firearms manufacturing startup that I, I run as well, too. And, uh, you know, uh, COVID things being uh, pushed to the side here, I'm actually just on all fronts, I'm very excited about where Kansas stands as a, as a state right now. I mean, when you look at our fiscal position, uh, our, our coffers are flush um, and no small part to what Governor Kelly has basically beat back the various special interest attempts uh, to really to uh, reward, uh, you know, to give uh, corporate income tax cuts um, to, you know, to, to their to their groups and she's been able to thin that off. And I think she's done a very good job uh, to basically manage the, the, the books. Um, and I also want to give Lieutenant Governor Tolan a huge shout out. I mean, that guy has won, I believe just recently, a, a number of golden shovel awards. Uh, Kansas is rocking it when it comes to new business startups and the, uh, the, the uh, things you're seeing going on here in the state of Kansas. So from a fiscal and economic development positioning standpoint, I'm, I'm really feeling good about uh, where we are at. Um, I also want to basically just emphasize the economic development uh, picture within Kansas. You know, as as a as an entrepreneur and, and doing a manufacturing smart up startup, um, it's really given me the opportunity to work firsthand with just the the resources we have in this state to grow business, and I. First of all, I can't say enough about guys like Steve Kelly, uh, you know, those, those technicians you have in your local chamber that can really work face-to-face -face with businesses, help them get resources, get boots on the ground and, and make visions a reality. And then we also have our various, what I would call our uh, entrepreneurial, uh, basically our, our research, uh, special resource centers, uh, places like the ITTC on, on Kansas campus, uh, the uh, Technology Development Institute out of K-State Manhattan, that's a mechanical engineering center of excellence. We have these incredible resources throughout the state that basically uh, small business folks, entrepreneurs like myself uh, can tap into and actually uh, you know, create uh, hopefully wealth that stays here in Kansas. And so I'm very bullish about having those resources in place. Um, we just want to briefly talk about uh, two things on the tax thing. First of all, hats off to Governor Kelly on her program to ax the food tax. Um, this has always been a bipartisan uh, desire uh, for several years, basically to figure out how we could uh, basically uh, reduce, get rid of whatever you want to call it, uh, the state sales tax on food. You know, Kansas is one of seven states that fully taxes food. We've got like the second highest rate in the, in the nation on food. And, you know, once again, in part through her good management of uh, the budget, uh, we're now in a position to do a complete elimination uh, in perpetuity of uh, that, that state sales tax. So uh, that's obviously my top uh, economic initiative here is to be sure we get that uh, state sales tax uh, cut uh, eliminated. Uh, once again, that's going to put about $500 in every Kansas family's pocket uh, annually once we get that done. That obviously means local uh, more money circulating in, in the local economy. 
that isn't going to uh, tax us for food. So I think it's a, that's a wonderful opportunity. Really appreciate the governor bringing that forward. The other thing I want to give a uh, basically a shout out to is her uh, in, uh, desire to basically this one-time income tax cut, um, basically for uh, filers filing individually. Uh, these would be for uh, current existing Kansas residents who have were here uh, basically in uh, 2020 and they're still here in, in the state. Uh, basically, they would receive a one-time $250 income tax rebate. Um, you're going to hear some folks saying that we need to be more aggressive on cutting income taxes, particularly corporate income taxes. And I think right now, given the precariousness of the national economy, and uh, what, what's going on, I think it's imperative uh, that uh, the, the one-time rebate the governor showed here is, is an incredibly wise approach to take. It's a way that we can immediately get money back in the pockets of, of our everyday citizens uh, that, you know, that, that pay the bulk of the taxes. It, it's the most fair, equitable way to do this. And it's not going to hobble us uh, by entertaining now uh, some sort of a, of a long-term income tax cut that's going to come back and bite us so we don't have money to pay later on for critical services uh, like our schools and emergency and, and health safety measures. Uh, so just uh, very delighted about where the state sits today. Uh, please now be working hard to uh, get that uh, state sales tax elimination passed uh, on, on the food sales tax as well as to uh, be sure that income tax uh, gets pushed through. And finally, Hugh, I want to just give you a shout out for doing these. It's always a lot of fun, but I also would like to make a suggestion. Um, you know, and I appreciate the, the various groups coming forth today and talking about their wants and needs, but when we really look at the, the legislative timing and, and the calendar and what we do, um, I would suggest that maybe that we have, maybe these be like a semi-annual event where maybe uh, we have a, a new summer get together basically where we could talk about needs from our local stakeholders because it really takes us weeks and obviously months to work with our counterparts and to to, to do the due diligence we knew uh, so we can get these things in place by the time the next legislative session rolls around so i would just suggest that maybe you all consider uh, that we have a separate time in the summer to do more of this you know information gathering and needs of our stakeholders and maybe lead the january meeting to more just focusing on what we see as coming up in the legislative session uh, but with that, I appreciate the opportunity to represent the 3rd District, and uh, everybody have a great 2022. Thank you. Thanks so much, Senator Holland. Yeah, I appreciate that offer, um, and, and more is probably better when it comes to communication. I, I know that I, I tried to, uh, here at the Chamber, we moved up our, our uh, development of the legislative agenda by just a month to try and get it ready for a November discussion at our board instead of December. And I found that a little challenging because you find that people, groups all break up and do their thing and they, they, they have their schedule of getting their act together in the fourth quarter. So I've been, you know, we're waiting on a lot of groups uh, feedback on their, their goals and agendas. Um, but, but a conversation, um, you know, during the summer when we're not typically talking about this things, these things uh, could, could be very helpful. So thank you. Yeah, just to follow up, I mean, and that's why the, I mean, if we could get some from you guys, I mean, maybe even like July, August, even, that allows us, uh, particularly as rankings on committees, that we can reach out to our respective chairs and vice chairs and start planting seeds, you know, and, and actually start working on legislation. Yeah. Because, because quite honestly, if people bring new ideas to us today, you know, the horse is already out of the barn. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty much locked and loaded the, with the Republican leadership. I mean, obviously they have their agenda. The governor has her programs and so i think the opportunity is largely missed so if we can be more proactive in that i'm, I'm sure your delegation would love to meet with you guys uh to to, to start working on things in advance we'd be more productive for you all as well yeah it's a great idea thank you um i see it does uh, senator Cluse has not been able to join us yet so we're going to move ahead now we can circle back if he's if he is able to make it uh but we'll I see uh, Representative Ballard, you're, you may still be on your iPhone, but you're, you're at your desk now. So um, we'll turn it over to Representative Barbara Ballard. And Barbara, you're still muted. All right, now I am not. I'll say happy new year. And I certainly hope everyone has a wonderful uh, 2022, a healthy one and everything else. So uh, 
I will just start by saying uh, I'm Barbara Mellon, as you said, 44th District. Uh, everything is west of Iowa at this point. And the committees I serve on is appropriations. And I think you all know that uh, there's 23 members on that one. I'm the ranking member on social services budget. And I'm very pleased with uh, the funding that we've been able to uh, get uh, with uh, Representative uh, Carpenter as the chair of the ranking committee for social services. I'm also on transportation, the Midwest Higher Education Compact, and the joint committee with Bob Bethel, uh, CAD Care Oversight, where we oversight the oversee the three private vendors that take care of all of our Medicaid. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting how it is, but I'll also say I'm on redistricting. And for those of you who don't know about redistricting, it's every 10 years, and it really is a hack because it's always trying to protect your own turf and um, when you're in the minority, that's what you do. You try to protect it as much as possible. But I represent Douglas County and I'm pleased uh, to do that. And we will really be working on it in the next three months to get it all ready uh, for all of our members around the state. Um, you know, I wanna thank the city, the county, the school board and having served on the school board, I mean, I really know that's just a job. I mean, a real job. Uh, and when you're messing with people's children and they will normally not be upset about anything, but when it comes to their children and what you have to do, uh, I'm really proud of what Lawrence is doing by trying to keep them safe and trying to keep them in school. And I think that's what's extremely important. Um, I would also look in terms of our budget. You heard Tom talk about it. We have a healthy budget right now. Sometimes it's almost better, you know, with all the years. And I've been in the legislature. I'm starting my 30th year. I have seen all kinds of things happen in between. I will still say it's exciting, though. The day is not exciting. I don't want to do it anymore. But, you know, it's one of these things where um, the budget is healthy and everybody thinks now I can get more money. And um, it's going to be interesting how we do spend our money this, this year. I would have to agree that higher ed has been slighted. Infrastructure on our grounds have been slighted. And those are things the legislature knows. We know we have to do something about that. Mental health services, we started our second task force. The first one I thought was outstanding. The second one is just as good because we have all the players meeting over a three month period of time. And you might say, why mental health? Well, you know, mental health fits in more importantly than we really think it does because it, it controls almost everything we do. And we know because of COVID and even before COVID, we were underserving people all around the state of Kansas. But we also know that right now with COVID, the numbers have increased. The key numbers have increased. So I'm glad we're doing something about it because it's an area we really have to do it. The workforce shortage, you will hear about that all the time. Can Care Oversight Committee, that's all we heard. We can't find people to work. We can't find people to work. Then it's the vaccine. And then it's not wanting the vaccine. And it just goes on and on. But mental health is doing it. And Bert Nash is doing all they can in this town to try and keep uh, you know, people uh, available services and everything else. I will just look at it by saying higher ed. Um, we've covered that pretty much. Um, COVID is still a problem. It's going to be a problem in the legislature. Right now, the legislature is agreeing with the governor. We extended it 15 days, but that's really a problem we have to really look at. The 250 that the governor is proposing, a lot of people are excited about it. They want the sales tax to go off for food, but it affects everybody, city, county, school board, and everything else in that process. You know what? There's a lot of things I could really tell you about that we just go on. But in July, we're going to get the 988 number, the suicide line 
That is why 985, 785, and 620 had to go with all 10 numbers to clear the way for us to have the big suicide hotline. And Douglas County is going to be the hub for that. And that's a really a coup for us. That means we can handle this situation. So, you know, when I look at all these things that we have, it is nice to have money. It is nice for us to be able to fund all these services but we have to stay healthy. And we know our hospital is full. Everything is happening in the process. So the legislature is gonna to have to deal not only with just the financial things, but how do we handle situations in order to be more helpful to people, especially on a personal basis. And that's one of the things that I've always tried to do. It is still an honor and a privilege to serve. I still, when I drive into the Capitol and I see the dome, I smile. And that's because, number one, I had that opportunity to work there. Only 165 people can do what we do. And we have to be mindful of our city, our county, our school boards, uh, our universities, and all of those needs. And I think we're trying to do it. I know I am. And it's an absolute pleasure for me and an honor to serve. And with that, I would say Happy New Year to all of you again. Thank you so much, Representative Ballard. Thank you for mentioning uh, uh, the suicide hotline as well. I know we've got our CEO headquarters on the line, Steve DeVore, who will appreciate those comments uh, too. So thank you. Um, next, we will hear from Representative Boog Hyper. Thanks, Hugh. Uh, it's a real honor to be here today to, and to represent such a great community. Uh, I represent the 46th House District, which is basically Lawrence, east of Iowa, south of the Turnpike, uh, north of either 19th or 23rd, depending on where you are, and I go a couple miles east of town. Uh, again, as always, um, I haven't heard any requests here that I can't support, but unfortunately, as always, uh, next year is going to be more about damage control than about achieving great positive things for the community. Uh, the legislature last year was more polarized than I've seen it during my time there, and this will be my eighth year. Um, and this year is going to be an election year, so I expect it's going to be even more challenging than last year. But given that, I, I'm real, really optimistic about a few things. Uh, I think we can make some progress on the food sales tax. I think there's bipartisan support. And I think Tom Holland's record, Senator Holland said that we have the second highest tax on food in the country. Effectively, we have the highest because Mississippi has a 7% rate, but almost no uh, local sales taxes like we do. So we, in Kansas, we're, we're the worst and that we can do better. Uh, to the city of Lawrence's point, I have drafted a bill that would exempt feminine hygiene products uh, from sales tax and looking for co-sponsors across the aisle right now. Uh, redistricting is going to be a, a big issue, as Senator Ballard pointed out. Uh, Douglas County uh, now has a census population of 118,000, which is uh, thanks to the uh, constitutional amendment we passed uh, last year that counted students uh, where they reside at the time of the census and because of population growth. We have enough population for five house districts right now. And I think the house uh, delegation will be proposing to draw uh, a, a map that has five house districts wholly contained within Douglas County. And I don't know whether that would get traction, but we're, we will propose it. Uh, I think a lot of you know the house uh, did pass a medical marijuana bill last year. Uh, I think there's some possibilities to move on that, but all medical marijuana bills are not alike. Uh, I'm not totally thrilled with the one that we passed. I think it, uh, it's geared much more toward big money players. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, go too far the other way, I think there's some serious problems like we're seeing in Oklahoma right now, which is just sort of a wild up field. But I hope we, we can find a common a middle ground uh, that will be beneficial to the state and make some progress there. Criminal justice reform is I think, another place where we can, uh, there's a potential bipartisan effort. Although we have had a setback, uh, the chair of the House Corrections Committee, uh, Russ Jennings, he was one of the last few remaining moderate Republicans left in the House, passed away this year. And so that's gonna change the dynamic there. Uh, and our prison population is uh, down. But we, we, my first six years in the, in the uh, House, we were right at capacity. Now we're down to, which is a little over 10,000. Now we're at 8,500. So 
hopefully we can take some measures to, uh, to keep those numbers down and to reduce them enough. Right now, there aren't really a lot of cost savings yet because we can't really generate cost savings until we have a lower enough population to close wings or facilities. And we're not there yet. I think there's some potential. Um, let's see. Well, I won't go on too much longer. I'm, I will say to Mayor Shipley, uh, I believe in you and to all the other representative people here. I've had both jobs. I think yours is harder, to be honest. So I'm going to keep mine. And this is probably the time where I should offer Paul Davis to have his job back again. But I'm afraid he won't accept that. Um, I look forward to working with you again. Um, and thanks for being here. And I look forward to working with you rest of the comments. Thanks so much, Boo. Appreciate you. Um, next, we will hear from Representative Christina Haswood. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, uh, for having me here. Um, I'm Representative Christina Haswood. I represent House District 10, which is basically east of Iowa Street, south of 19th. When you get to Haskell, south of 23rd, um, south of Eudora, then go down a little bit of Wellsville, um, and then we go west, entirety of Baldwin City, and then back up to 59 Highway to Iowa Street. It's currently what my district is at the moment. Um, I sit on the committees of uh, federal and state affairs, health and human services, agriculture, and the Joint Committee on Tribal State Relations. So there has been a change in my committee assignment, which I'm uh, also sad and also excited for. Um, I was previously on the Water Committee um, and I got switched to federal and state, which I'm excited because they get to work more hands-on with uh, Native American Indigenous policies when they come through the State House. And um, through for interim committees, um, I was on the Water Committee interim committee last summer, which was in Garden City. Um, and one of the great things about, um, you know, I'm starting my second year in the state legislature, so I'm one of the newest members um, in our delegation, or the newest member, um, is that this job takes you across the state and it sees you all. Um, you get to see all the beautiful things about Kansas, but also all the issues um, firsthand. And it's very frustrating um, when a lot of these issues are not taken seriously in the legislature. Um, I was on the interim committee of agriculture and we talked about the Pet Animal Act. So I worked um, a lot with the Humane Society um, and those organizations in our community um, who helped me get up to speed on this um, act, what they would like to see and how this would impact our community. Um, and I was also on the um, interim committee 30 by 30 with Senator Francisco. Um, and I will definitely reiterate that this was um, a proposed voluntary goal with no teeth. Um, and thirdly, I'll just quickly list some of my accomplishments. Um, in my first year as a state legislator, um, I've held seven town halls, two were uh, specifically for Baldwin City um, to gain input from constituents for them to get to know me. Um, I passed one bill that I co-sponsored with Representative Dr. Pogli Victors on missing more indigenous peoples, um, which is an epidemic issue in the indigenous community. Um, it was a great opportunity for Kansas to really take a step forward in indigenous policy, um, but it also gave me the opportunity to ask Haskell students to ask the young indigenous folks of Kansas to testify in the state legislature and to um, leave that ladder down for getting involved in state policy and politics. Um, I co-sponsored four bills um, this past summer. I and a couple of my other state legislators created a summer internship called Bench Builders, um, where we recognize the issue of um, there's really nobody on deck um, in the legislature. I saw this issue where a couple of our members um, had to resign and it was a scramble to, to be like, who's next? Um, so I think that uh, gap of preparing the people who will be in these leadership positions or who are in leadership positions in their own community capacity um, is very important and to just invite people to bring a hand down to people to get more involved in state legislative politics. Um, I also serve in the capacity of volunteering on the Native American Economic Task Force. So I work with closely with Ryan Rains um, and the city on a volunteer basis and what we're doing and what the city, one of their priorities through the strategic plan is through Native American economics, 
we have Haskell here, so we have a large indigenous population. And I think it's um, it's been too long for us to focus on the indigenous economics um, and the potential that it has here for our city. Um, I agree with the comments of housing, especially being um, a young adult housing and especially having a legislator salary. A lot of these don't create the perfect um, formula for me to achieve housing um, that gets on to child care. Right. Um, and if I were to have family planning um, goals, it'd be very difficult to do that in a sensible manner. Um, so those are uh, issues that I feel very personally and passionate about. Um, I've also been working in a volunteer capacity with uh, providing comments for the transportation plan. Um, so I had a couple high school students reach out to me saying that um, KU doesn't pay for the bus system, KU students, but high school students still do. And the high school situation is they're not allowing all students on campus due to COVID. Um, so I believe it's only like athlete, athletes and freshmen are allowed to live on the dorm on campus while everyone else was expected to find an apartment, find housing somewhere in Lawrence. And all apartments in Lawrence don't provide campus free shuttle to the universities and the city buses still charge a reduced rate for Haskell students. So I've been working um, in partnership with um, Adam Wiggle. Uh, Mayor Shipley has been a great year for that um, and providing advice. So it's really great to have that input. And then there was a town hall specifically near Haskell to get involved the students. Uh, we had great input from the student uh, president on how can we include Haskell in this new transportation plan and providing more bus stops. Um, so currently what I'm working on is for the past uh, of my duration, I've been working on the Baldwin City bike trail. So they were wanting to connect from Ottawa City to Baldwin City um, on the Midland Railroad. Um, there has been uh, similar projects throughout the state, um, and we've been working in collaboration um, with the governor's office, with Parks and Recs, um, and just trying to find a solution. Um, and it's really great to see Baldwin City get the recognition of Main Street, uh, which is a statewide program that's been revamped. Um, and I've also been working with uh, the college students here um, at KU for uh, getting a college voting poll requirement um, to increase access to voting um, locations to make uh, voting more accessible and more convenient for our college students, especially when there's going to be ballot initiatives that are going to be impacting um, their livelihood. So we want to increase the access of voting um, and some of my hopes are to pass in the reduction of food sales tax um, is definitely a big one. I had a whole town hall dedicated to this past summer on food insecurity within partnership with the mutual aid um, organization called uh, Lawrence uh, LFK Eats, as well as Kansas Appleseed. Um, and it was a great well attended town hall that reducing and most importantly eliminating food sales tax is definitely um, what our community needs. Medicaid expansion, um, I'm always in support of that. Medical marijuana, um, there has been, I believe, a new bill introduced the other day too from House Dems on uh, this piece um, and just seeing this be more um, of, a, of a policy that Kansas has been saying across the state that they want. Um, expanding high-speed internet and access to mental health and senior services center care and employees. Um, so we have a, uh, that, that seems to be a common theme. Um, but other than that, um, thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you everybody on this call for all the great work that you do for our community um, and take care. Thank you, Representative Haswood. And finally, uh, Representative Amex, thank you for scrambling things and, and making it possible to join us this morning. We'll turn it over to you. Sorry, Mike, you're still on mute. You know, I did that yesterday several times and you know, it's uh, one of those things that I go through and I apologize, but Hugh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to be here today uh, with all of the other uh, 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 folks in government, local government, and being able to hear the requests that they have. You know, Hugh, there was a time where you and I would have probably been in the middle of writing 
uh, the uh, priority is in the city of Lawrence. And it's one of those things that I know that uh, uh, I'm going to be very supportive of as I look at the uh, priorities of all of the uh, uh, governmental units that we have uh, in Douglas County. I uh, represent the 45th district, which is uh, Western uh, Lawrence, Western Douglas County, um, right below uh, Lone Star Lake, all the way up to uh, the Jefferson County line and from Shawnee County line, uh, heading east almost to uh, 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 Leavenworth County. So uh, I have uh, cities, obviously, of uh, West Lawrence, uh, Northwest Lawrence, Lecompton, Lone Star, and, and, and community of Clinton. So I have a very, very big uh, geographical district and one I'm very proud to represent. Um, you know, this is my uh, fourth year in the legislature. Uh, it's one that's going to be very interesting, as you've heard uh, from uh, the uh, rest of the delegation and things that we have going on. I serve as ranking uh, uh, member on general government budget. I'm on higher education budget, and I'm also on local government committees. So there is a, I spend a lot of time with numbers throughout the day and get the opportunity to work on a lot of local issues. So I look forward to every year being able to work with uh, our county and uh, city representatives on, on items that come forward. Things that are important to me and, and the folks in my district that I hear from, obviously, as Boog brought up a second ago, redistricting is, is a huge uh, item that is uh, coming from the 45th district. We've seen a lot of growth in the 45th district over the last several years, especially over the last 10 years. And, um, you know, there's probably obviously going to be some change in that district. I think we are at a point if we uh, continue to push and, and, and we draw those districts uh, uh, correct, we can end up with five districts all in Douglas County. I think that is extremely important for representation uh, to uh, the residents of uh, all of Douglas County and something that I, I really push for. Medicaid expansion. It is past time, folks. It is time that we take this bull by the horns and we get this done. As Senator Francisco talked about, there would have been no cost. I mean, it's something that needs to be done. It has to be done. This is this is crazy times that we're living in and, you know, things just need to happen and we need to help people along those lines of helping people. The uh, sales tax on food has been mentioned by every one of the legislature. Governor Kelly's to be applauded for being able to bring that forward, you know, and, and be able to talk about that. That puts money in people's pockets. That is important today. When you consider that, I think they're talking about the average of $500, uh, you know, uh, per household, you know, that is real money. So let's, uh, let's make sure that that happens. You know, we talk about transportation and the, uh, the support of uh, expanding broadband. We need to make sure that the IAC program continues to move forward. We don't raid any of those funds. We close the bank of KDOT as uh, has been being pushed by Governor Kelly. That needs to happen also. We need to get uh, the uh, final two legs of the South Lawrence Trafficway done, or the two lanes, I'm sorry. Uh, that is an uh, area that obviously is important to me because it runs through the current 45th district. Um, and, and, you know, it's uh, uh, one of safety and being able to move people in a very good way. So another thing that's important is making sure uh, we had a bill that uh, uh, I brought forward, worked with the chamber and with the Peasley Tech Board last year, uh, continue to work uh, to uh, uh, get whatever is necessary to help people become more employable and being able to get folks certified and being able to uh, do any number of things. You know, we uh, uh, with Peasley Tech, here's something that is truly um, um, should set the standard for across the state on being able to uh, do things and helping folks get certified to gain employment and so many different things. So uh, that is something that to be very proud of. Uh, I think uh, Senator Francisco did bring up something that's important in my district was the item of the name stole on a, uh, a local business as it relates to uh, the cemetery. Uh, you know, folks, there's a lot of times we're in uh, uh, as Douglas County uh, folks, we are in projects all together and, you know, we want to make sure that we all, you know, look after one another. And, you know, this is something that is important to uh, the folks out in Stoll and, and LeCompton. I think that we ought to do what we can to help, you know, that request and being able to remove that name. You know, um, uh, higher education. Um, that is, uh, you know, I'm supportive of K through 12 uh, uh, funding uh, throughout. 
uh, but higher education is, I think, uh, uh, Paul brought up uh, uh, being, uh, you know, a lot of the backbone that goes on in our community here. Uh, you know, Kelly, I look forward to working with you and the chancellor um, and uh, provost, anyone else who uh, wants to be able to visit to make sure that we're able to bring those levels up and get us back to uh, being able to do so many things, being able to provide raises and being able to hold those tuition costs down. Uh, so, so I look forward to uh, being able to work with everybody. Uh, and I always appreciate the time that we have this morning. And uh, thanks for allowing me to run a little bit late and have to leave a little bit early. But uh, uh, look forward to working with everybody. Uh, Tom Holland, uh, Senator Holland, I do like your idea of maybe going to uh, bringing this up uh, in the summertime, too. It would be uh, uh, a great opportunity to be able to get a lot of advanced time and being able to bring a lot of the issues forward. So, uh, you, thank you very much. Again, thanks to everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, and thanks to everybody to uh, whether you're a first responder, you're a teacher, you're a small business owner, big business, uh, uh, all the work that you've done throughout this entire pandemic time. I know this has been tough. Uh, you know, uh, as I sit here in my business this morning and, and uh, just try to continue to make things happen. Uh, you know, I'm, my uh, special thanks to all of you and the amount of work and attention that you've done to make sure that safety of your employees, your customers, whatever may be, uh, uh, my hat's off to all of you. Thank you so much, Representative Amix. Make, appreciate you making the, the time this morning. Uh, sure. I just, before we wrap, I wanted to just briefly revisit our, uh, our sponsors here and start with RPG, Restaurant, Pub and Games. That's a, that's a unique uh, sponsorship and uh, appreciate uh, Nate Morshus and Matt Poole and your team getting involved. I know Nate just ran for school board, and uh, I think we're going to see RPG leadership doing more and more in the area of uh, community building. So we're glad to have you on board. Uh, LMH Health and, and, and Russ Johnson, uh, been a great active board member and, and, and uh, leader of our capital campaign. Now treasurer with everything that's going on there. We, we really appreciate uh, your commitment uh, to, to the chamber. Jared Abel there at the hospital uh, serving on our public policy task force as well. Uh, U.S. Bank, Michael Roscoe, our you know, just recent uh, chair of the board. And now we're thrilled to have Brad Burnside back on the board here. But uh, your, your leadership in the community is, is greatly appreciated in your partnership with us. CEK Insurance, permanent leadership Lawrence uh, sponsor and uh, uh, often uh, not just giving in, in sponsorships and, and dollar commitment, but in, in time and talent. Mark Bueller, Mike Willoughby, uh, Tom Karasik, the whole team. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, who am I missing? Oh, Evergy. So Evergy. Uh, Laura Lutz with their government relations department. Uh, Mark Geddes is uh, a fixture at our government affairs uh, luncheons. Uh, the entire team there, um, always always there for us when, when called upon. Um, we really appreciate all of you. And uh, again, I wanna thank our, uh, our state delegation for your time and for always being accessible to us. And on behalf of the entire chamber, I just wanna say that we wish each and every one of you a healthy, happy 2022. Thanks for being here and have a great day.